All right, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Dragonite, and welcome back to making a 3D RPG in Game Maker Studio. So in the last part, I was working on very primitive combat. Uh, you have, uh, if I can find the right button, melee attacks. And I can attack the NPC until it goes away. Uh, and you have uh, ranged attacks, which currently is just a bunch of sparks flying out of your face. And um, I think it's time to, uh, to move on and polish up some of those systems. I have this item on the ground. Found an unused. Fascinating. I think that got. I think that was something else, but it got screwed up when I added another item. Um, I've done a few things off recording, which I should probably talk about. One is, uh, I've I've added. This is the main thing, really. Butterflies. And these are basically items that you can pick up out of the sky, if if it can get close enough. They don't really do anything. They're just items to sit in your inventory. I can't get close enough. I'm not going to bother. Um, I've also added, I think, dragonflies, which which buzz around a little bit differently. They sort of hover and uh, and move around in a less fluttery fashion. But anyway, that's what I've done. I've also gone and made a uh, a quest uh, a quest log, which was basically just drawing a bunch of text on the screen at a given point, which I don't really feel like showing off and I don't really feel like adding to on recording because it was kind of boring to do. Anyway, first I'm gonna I like the range attacks. I like the range attacks best, but there's a few things I want to do. Um, first, I'm going to make it so that the uh, the particles actually shoot out of your right hand instead of out of your face. That's going to be 8 times d cosine of direction plus 9d. I kind of plotted this out on paper before I uh, set out to actually do it. And y minus 8 times 8, no, 8, that's a 9, 8 times d sine direction plus 9d. Let's run the game again and try that out and see how that looks. All right, here we are. Let's go to range and whoa. That is not what I had in mind. It's shooting off way off in the distance. Okay. How is this? Oh, the, the plus 90 should be within the parentheses. Okay, let's try that again. Alright, here we are, this should work. And that's shooting out of my left hand. This feels really weird because I'm not left handed, I'm right handed in real life. Oh. I know what I did wrong now. Instead of plus 90, this should be minus 90 because unit circles. Let's try that again. Please work. Okay, good, it's shooting out of my right hand this time. And if I turn, it's still shooting out of my right hand. And the, the next thing that I want to do when it comes to throwing projectiles is if I were to look up at the sky, I don't, um, I don't aim up at the sky. And I feel like I should aim up at the sky if I look up. And that's going to be a little more trigonometry. Uh, in which, in which case, I mean, let's see, projectile that z speed equals, right now it's negative c gravity, which is basically, um, the constant for gravity going up in the air instead of down. Um, I don't know why I made it that. I should probably make it instead something like d sine of pitch times something. Let's go with uh, d sine of pitch times r, which will be the same speed that it goes. The 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 it's going to be the same uh, horizontal speed, the x y speed, except instead of um. Instead of going side to side, back and forth, it'll be going up in the air. Alright, so I look ahead and I'm throwing it straight as usual. I look up, and it's kind of going up in the air. I look down. I feel like it definitely goes farther when I look up, as it should. But, uh, if I can get a good angle, yeah, it's definitely going farther. It's definitely going up in the air, as it should, but it's probably not as hard. Uh, let's throw it a little harder up in the air. Let's say R times 2, maybe, see if that feels a little better. Alright, so let's uh, try that again. Alright, I'm definitely, this thing's definitely got more velocity now. And it's uh, it's landing quite farther away. Can I hit the NPC from here? Alright, so I wasn't able to hit the NPC from where I'm standing. I'm either, my, either my aim is terrible or I'm just standing too far away for it to actually work. Um... Let's see. It also occurs to me, and I probably don't want to worry about this now, but it occurs to me that since you're throwing 
the where you're throwing the thing is a little offset. It's going to always miss the crosshairs. It's never going to actually hit the crosshairs, uh, the projectile, uh, because it's offset by a distance of eight. And I'm gonna I'm gonna leave a note. Um, sometime in the future, have the projectile fly off uh, towards the crosshairs instead of in a straight line, uh, because that is how you would probably throw something in real life. Uh, for those of you who have ever thrown something in real life. Um, let's see, the next thing that I want to do is get rid of the annoying, <clears throat> the annoying, um, tail behind what you're throwing. And, let's see, the, uh, the render script, how, how the projectile is drawn on the screen, what happens when the projectile is drawn on the screen, is going to be, draw projectile, offensive, how about. This is the default code for, that's not it. Um, draw. This is the default code for drawing projectiles. Um, it basically just creates a particle, one of those asterisk particles, as I like to call them. There's a bunch of code involved in creating particles, but I just like to uh, abstract it to a tiny little script called create particle that takes a bunch of arguments for movement and position and rotation and all that fun stuff. Um, so instead of this, instead of creating particles based on um, the uh, graphic settings, render distance is one of the graphic settings. The higher it is, the more particles you'll create because uh, we presume that your computer can handle it. Uh, mine can't, by the way. Instead of doing this, I'm going to say draw model. Is this draw model? Um, this is going to... Okay, so this is going to require that I have a model index, which is basically... Oh, no, no it isn't. No, it isn't. Fortunately, there's a couple of... Uh, extra parameters I can pass that I see. Text default. I have no idea where my fingers are on the keyboard today. Show hidden items is false. That doesn't matter ultimately for this though. Model is going to be, I'm going to leave that blank for now. And model index is going to be, I'm going to also leave that blank for now. Okay. And um, I'm going to, in const item, I'm going to attach to each one of these items, a model and a model index. Um, uh, the model is going to be models dot like bicycle models dot baseball whatever, and the model index is going to be a specific um. Let's see. Uh, I'm not going to do it in here. Instead, all right, first, I'll explain it as I go. How about that? Um, is there anything model and model index? Okay, so these variables are already initialized. Um, I can't really show what models.it throwable looks like because it's, um, it's wrapped up. Yes, I can. What am I talking about? All right, I accidentally opened Adobe Premiere. Hang on, give me a minute. All right, so one of the rather over-the-top things that I've done for this game is create a model archive format. So instead of importing each model individually, um, the game stores them in a buffer and loads the buffer, and it's much faster than loading each model individually. Um, IT throwable is going to be a small objects. For example, I think a star piece. If I were to zoom all the way in on this, this is a this is supposed to be anyway a star piece from Pokemon. Uh, I can move it up and down, rotate it a bit. So you can hopefully see it a little better. No? Anyway, that's an unlit star piece from Pokemon. There there it's lit. Now it's a little easier to see. Um, I believe uh, that is a book. Yeah, that looks like a book. An untextured book. Uh, tea is like a cup of tea. And I don't know. It's That's also an item in the game because who knows why. Uh, Comet Shard... That's that's a star piece. I don't know why I have that as Comet Shard. Compiler is also a book. All right, well, enough fooling around. Um, a lot of the books are untextured, but never mind. That is how models are stored in this game. Um, I want to open up const model. I have so totally just lost all of my audience who might have been watching still at this point by going on about how models are stored in this game. Um, anyway, I want to store... 
I want another script here. Add item set model. And this is going to take three arguments. The item model model index. And we're going to say with argument zero model equals argument one model index equals argument two. And we don't need to return a value because this just sets, sets a bunch of uh, variables. And I'm going to move this over to my other screen so I can still see it. Actually, I'm going to keep it over here so that you can, uh, you can see where I'm looking at it. Uh, items are stored in uh, the general category. There's item book, item throwable. Oops, don't accidentally move code around. Item eraser, item radio, item spatula, item T, item bicycle. And most of the, the rest of the general uh, category models are probably also going to be um, items. And if I scroll down here a little, nope, not don't scroll down there. If I scroll down here a little, you can see they are extracted from the, uh, the resource file as a buffer. I love buffers. I never got around to making a tutorial on buffers, but kind of wish I did. They are fun to mess around with, and if you ever need to load things from the, uh, the hard drive, you probably want to do it via buffer because it's lightning fast. Um, where was I? Oh yes, I was moving this over here so I can still see it. I was going to say, uh, add item set model and items dot none can have, I'll just give items dot none models dot npc box, which is like a blank square. It's a uh, models plural is the new name. Thank you. Uh, that's just a blank square index of zero because I can have multiple items stacked up inside one uh, model index to minimize the number that I just have floating around. Um, I'm going to move this. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to move this down to the bottom, and I'm going to assign. I'm going to assign all of these on my own time. For example, baseballs and baseballs, throwable, throwable. I'm going to cut out myself just assigning models to all of these items real quick. Hang on. Okay, so I've gone and attached models to most of the uh, the items in the game. Uh, some of them just have NPC box, which again is the... Um, I don't remember why I called it NPC, but uh, some of them just have the box for the model, which is basically a, a basic square. Next, before I run the game, there's going to be something else I want to do, and that's going to be draw... Is this the model index or the model object? Alright, so this is the model index. Um... Let's see, the item that has thrown. Do, I can close out of this. Do these, uh, the projectiles that are created know the item that they're created as? Uh, okay, so they, it looks like they don't. So, projectile offensive item should be initialized to items.none. And next when it's created, projectile the item equals um, whatever you're holding in your right hand. Okay, so uh, how do I get, again, the weapon that you've got equipped? It's going to be, I think, something along the lines of all classes, player to active, character dot weapon I think that's the item that's the item that you're holding so then you're gonna want all items dot model all right I'm going to need to type this out again so I'm saving it to a variable because I don't want to have to type that out again item dot model and item dot model index all right var item because of course we need to initialize that okay so this is going to instead of uh, drawing sparklies where the the thing you've thrown it's going to draw the model of the thing that you've thrown and i'm going to need to clear the compiler cache because i added a few scripts since uh since running the game since running the game last uh, so I'm going to have to sit here for a few minutes and wait for the game to recompile. Okay, I guess we've got a compile error. Uh, this equals 
Oh, oh, I'm stupid. Item has already been initialized as part of the projectile. And for projectile the item, we just need this. Okay. We don't even need the uh, the items array because we just need the item index for this, right? And here all items of item index like this. Okay, that should uh, that should run better than if it had run at all. That should run better than what I had uh, written a minute ago. Time to sit here and wait for compile times. Okay, let's try this. Range attack, set for range attack, and the game crashes when I hit the L button. R button, whatever. Um, oh, did I not name the script that I created? Oh, I accidentally modified the default projectile script instead of, um, instead of creating a new one. Alright, so instead of doing that, draw projectile default. Let's duplicate this. Draw projectile offensive and copy that in there and try this again please work the way i intend you to range something is happening it looks like it's drawing a spark where it lands but not 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 anything else um what happens because I was going to expect a square to be thrown, because that's what, um, that's what, what happens if I pick up undefined over here? A square is what the uh, the default uh, current weapon is, or unused, or whatever it is. General items, unused. Let's equip that as weapon to chase. And now when I hit the R button, it's, it's still doing it. Okay, so what happens if I go stick an item in the world? Uh, item, where is item? Item is here. And what happens if... Eh, why can't I... Come on, thank you very much. Thank you for selecting. Item is going to be baseball. Let's pick up this. Found a baseball. Let's equip this as a weapon to chase instead. Good, the unused has returned to my inventory like it should. And let's throw this. Nope, it's still not drawing it. Okay. Uh, my next question is, where are we drawing this? It should be at the uh, the object's X, Y, Z. Right? Draw set transform stack. Translation X, Y, Z. It should be... Hmm... I don't know why it isn't drawing the item. Um, I love how the render distance, the trees aren't drawn at a high render, at a, uh, a low render distance, a far away distance. And um, I love how you can just see them popping in and out of existence when I do this. I should probably increase the, the threshold for drawing the trees, but anyway, um, I guess instead of calling draw model, I can do this manually. Uh, D3D transform transform add um, yeah add translation X Y Z uh, D3D transform set identity D3D model draw all models of all items of item dot model dot model index of I'm gonna I'm gonna save this to a variable called it short for item because I'm too lazy to type it out dot uh, it dot model index. Oops, no, it's model array. Model array of all that. 
zero 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 text ID is text default okay this is the longer code for drawing a model this is what happens inside this draw model script um, essentially so please draw something draw draw the wrong model I don't care just draw something actually I, I would care if you draw the wrong model because that would be even more of a pain to the bug all right before I actually bother to pick up the item I'm going to go all right, it's drawing a square. That is indeed. It looks hilarious because it's got the entire texture wrapped around it, um, as opposed to a like a white square. I didn't even bother to correct the texture mapping on it. Did I misspell that? And did it really crash? All right, let's do that properly. Equip weapon to chase. All right, now let's throw something. We've got a baseball equipped. Wrong attack. And we are indeed throwing a Comet Shard. And not a baseball. Okay, well that's better than that's better than an untextured box. Alright, I shouldn't say an untextured box. It's um Alright, I just wanted to have one more look at that before I deleted it. It's a uh, a box that is not properly textured. An improperly textured box, let's go with. Um in that case I think I just need to go and look at Baseball, items throwable. I want to look at what exactly I'm throwing. Alright, so comment shard, oh, baseball should be two, second index inside throwable. So let's let's do this. Tennis ball should then be a three. A hockey puck should be five. What's four? I think four is T. Four should be five. No, T should be 4. Right? Oh, well, I'll deal with that later. I don't care what the rest of them look like right now, just the baseball. All right. Let's do this. Okay, so not only is it actually drawing the correct item now, it's actually drawing the correct item now, which I did not completely expect to happen just by messing with that code. Anyway, let's pick up the baseball. Let's go equip the baseball uh, to chase. Let's close out of the inventory. Let's go switch to range. And we're throwing a baseball. Perfect. I wonder. I feel like it should bounce when it hits something, but I don't really want to mess with that now. Make it bounce. Hmm. I'm going to throw baseballs at your head. Again, it's not going where the crosshairs are. Yeah, there you go. It goes away. Uh, it's not traveling where the crosshairs is because it's offset to the side a little bit and it really should travel towards um towards where you're looking on the screen instead of a couple of pixels to the right of it also i wonder if like you hold down the button you could throw it farther that's how the uh the physics ball i don't know how many people have noticed when i hold down uh the b button and release it i throw what i like to call the physics ball and it's basically it tests the terrain geometry for me to see what's solid and what's not without me having to go climbing all over it. That might have been a little bit far. But, um, yeah, that's the physics ball. It does bounce when it hits something. And I'm wondering how much similar behavior the baseball that you throw should have, should have to that. Anyway, how long have I been recording for? An hour 21 minutes. I don't feel like this has been an especially productive episode. Because a lot of this is going to be cut out compile times and stuff like that. And, woo, that's a big sun. Might want to make the sun a little bit smaller. I also feel like I should uh, make the, the sun blend like orange or something like that instead of green. But I have no idea how to actually do that. And um, this, might, might, this might not be the best time for me to learn. There's probably a shader or something that could do it, right? Could probably do it with a shader. I don't know. I don't care right now. Um, what else do I want to do? Because I want to get something else done before I finish recording. Equipment menu. That's the center of the settings menu because I I meant to get rid of the equipment menu altogether. Uh, let me go and remove that from the actual uh, the graphics. Remove the line of text. Um, game HUD pause is it? All right. Main. We're gonna get rid of the line that says equipment. We're going to get rid of. We're going to move all of these up. Twenty pixels. Oops. 144. We're going to move the texture background up 20 pixels. 
And now the equipment menu is gone, or the, the thing for the equipment menu is gone anyway. The, uh, the entry in the menu, the entry on the screen that says equipment, because uh, that is now handled through inventory. And I suppose I need, there should be a way to de-equip whatever you're holding without having to go and re-equip something else. So I could probably do that through the character menu. Um, I'm going to do that first. First. That's in draw model. I don't want draw model anymore. I've had enough of that script not working and everything. Uh, this is movement player. This should only be if you're holding anything. If uh, all classes player the active character the weapon not equal to no one. If this condition is true, then throw. Otherwise, I don't know if you should log to the console that you're not holding anything or just just not worry about it at all. Um, need a, a square bracket there to close off that statement. I don't know if there should be an else print out you're not holding anything or something like that. That's not an especially useful debug message, so I think I'll leave it out. Um, also, it stands to reason that you can attack by biting in melee combat, even if you don't have anything equipped, because, um, you know, you can just bite with your regular teeth without any augments like vampire teeth or false teeth or, I don't know, whatever other kind of teeth you might equip. But I think I'll, for the, for the sake of consistency, I think I'll do the same thing. Um, in fact, let's not wrap it around in here. Let's wrap it around the, uh, the R button. Unindent that. Uh, con if control, I press R and this. I need to, that was a long line of code, but I need to get rid of some of the extra details. Um, if you're not holding anything, then you just won't attack. In any style of combat. I suppose maybe in, a, in nerd combat, Joe could just like recite the periodic table on his own without need for holding anything. And bore foes to sleep that way. But you know what? Let's be consistent here. Uh, what else did I want to do? I think I wanted... Let's implement like a weight. No. Yeah, let's, lim let's implement a weight for the items. So that... um. Like, you can wing a baseball farther than the lawnmower, which I'm sure most people can. And, um, how about the distance that you fling the item be uh, determined by, uh, by your attack stat or something like that? What's the default attack stat? Um, class. The default attack is 100. All right, R equals uh, 2.5 times um, all classes player dot active character dot attack, is it? I don't even remember what I just read. Class. All right, it's, uh, it's range attack. Range underscore ATK specifically. Time dot range ATK. Okay, and this needs to be divided by 100 because that's the normal. That's the, uh, well, not the normal, like the, the physics normal. But that's uh, the default value. And... The amount of damage it does when it hits is going to be... Alright, what's the code that happens when when you hit something? Projectile. I kind of want to get into experience and stuff in the next video. I'll worry. I'll worry about that in the next video. Uh, dealing damage and um, causing the NPCs to die and gaining experience. I will like throw a bunch of NPCs in the game world and slowly attack them until there's none left and watch my experience and stuff go up. Ah, uh, yeah, that can wait. Um, what else did I want to do? I kind of want to draw the characters' noses in first person. I know I've talked about this before, but I want to draw the characters' noses in first person. 
Except I don't know if I have the models for that imported yet into the game yet, and I don't really feel like doing that on recording. This video has so far all been ra dealing with range attack, and I haven't really done anything with the other styles of attack yet. That's partially because I don't know what to do with them, and partially because range is more interesting to me. Um, I suppose I could uh, implement a targeting system. Hmm. I'm suddenly feeling like there's not enough buttons on the Xbox controller. Alright, you know what we'll do? Because um, I'm thinking of the controls in terms of Xbox controller more than mouse and keyboard, even though it's slightly easier to move around with mouse and keyboard. Uh, we're a sneak. I'm going to get rid of sneaking around. I'm going to get rid of movement states that sneaking. I can get rid of this. I don't know why I have that, to be honest. Um, where else is sneak written down in the code? Anywhere. Movement player. Alright, we can get rid of this because we're not going to have movement say stop sneaking anymore again. Um, if controller.sneak, that's uh, movement speed has been cut in half, or movement speed has been set to move speed sneak or whatever. And speaking of which, uh, there is a constant for move speed sneak, which would probably go away. Alright, let's get rid of you. Controller.create. Uh, sneak, these are like hotkeys. For, um, like, common terms, I've labeled them. Like, interact is going to be A, back is B, start, select. I don't think these are used anywhere. So I don't know if I should just get rid of those, too, while I'm here. Uh, Control.create, last sneak. Let's go and uh, press sneak is release sneak. Y'all can go away. All right, so there is no more sneaking in the code. Instead, I'm going to say... An entity target equals no one. And oops, I did not want to import a text file. Uh, I, target, you'll see what this is in a minute. But let's see. If movement player. Alright, so if controller dot press r2 r2 being whatever what's it called on the actual controller rb right bumper if you press if you press right bumper then if world dot ray object not equal to no one or no target equals world dot ray object that way if you hit if you hit the right bumper when you've got like nothing selected nothing under your crosshairs then it'll just reset the target to no one um now world dot draw this is where we're going to actually draw the target Firstly, I'm going to say, ooh, this could be tricky. Maybe I want draw on the game HUD instead. I know there's a way to draw stuff. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I think I know what I'm doing. Since I, I never know what I'm doing, but I think I know what I need to copy and paste. Um, draw text string, show text option. Show item description, show player money, speaking. Where is... Oh, speaking hour, world to 2D. All right. This, I'm going to copy and paste. Um, if... I'm just going to do it here, right beneath the uh, speech bubble. If a uh, player dot, uh, layer dot target not equal to no one, world to 2D. And, alright, this is going to return an array. Var array equals this. Um, player dot target dot x, player dot target dot y, and player dot target dot z. And it's going to need um, 
x from, y from, and z from, which is going to be the camera.x, camera.y, and camera.z. And let's see. I'm going to say How about let's let's just do this. Draw circle at array of 0, that's the x. Array of 1, that's the y. Radius of let's go with 16. Outline only is going to be true. All right, let's try this. You should get a red circle showing up on the screen over the uh over the NPC's face when I uh, when I target him with R, with R2, right bumper, whatever. All right, here we are in the game. I'm going to run over to this dude. We're going to hit the right bumper. And indeed, there's a circle. Um, you can't see it real well. And it's getting, it's getting slightly off-center as I get farther away. All right, so it's not a perfect system. I feel like that should go away if you're far enough away. This is an error in the mapping. What is this? This is this is odd. Something askew with my uh my map editor, Voxelish there. I'm gonna have to look at that. Um alright, so it's not perfect, but it does do the job when you're close up. And probably um I should make it so that if you get far enough away. If you get far enough away, maybe like this distance away, it'll go away. I don't know. Um, Alright, so I'm clicking off of him now. How close do I have to be for it to show up? I've actually got to be pretty close for him to show up. Alright, well, hmm. Alright, well that's the start for a targeting system. Alright, instead of using object. I'm going to say C raycast world from X, Y, Z to uh, X plus, oh, come on, what's, um, hang on, I'm going to copy and paste more code because I can't remember the expression for the, uh, the raycast. All right, collision object raycast mouse, collision object Raycast mouse. All right. Instead of this, I'm going to use just this function, which makes things much easier. Uh, the object is going to be player. Um, the mask is going to be collision primary. Don't worry about that. That's a constant. Uh, distance is going to be how about what's what's a good um. Target distance. Let's make that a constant too. I don't know how far that should be. How about 256? Because 256 is a nice uh, square number, literally. And I believe then target should be collision get object. All right. This is just going to return the object that the raycast collides with. Let's run the game again, and I should be able to target people from farther away. All right, let's try standing back here. Now let's go a little farther away. R2. Oh, come on. All right, so that's colliding with the world. All right, so there's a little thing. There's a little I'm gonna have to do first. Um, var object equals collision get object, and if instance of object entity npc then um what is it target equals object else target equals no one all right so this is a little expanded uh we're checking to see if um if the the instance that you uh, that the raycast collides with is an npc or is an ancestor of the npc um all right, I can run the game again. This is taking a while. All right, oh hey, the moon is coming up. I'm going to go and stand all the way back here by the puddle. I'm gonna try and get this guy in my crosshairs. Target you, too far away. I think I'm too far away. 
I'm not running straight. I'm running like sideways. Come on. Am I close enough? Where's the uh the button on the controller? Nope, apparently still not close enough. 256 isn't that much of a distance. Maybe I should increase it to like 1024 or something. Or 1000 if you want, round numbers. Um, that's neat. Alright, I'm going to want to tweak this targeting system in the future. I love how it, the circle appears to grow, but it actually just stay the, stays at the same size. It's the radius of 16 pixels. But it just appears to grow and shrink as you get farther away and closer because of um, the size of the NPC it's on. Anyway, um, I suppose... Something else that would be good to do. First, I'm going to increase the target distance because 256 is just too short. Let's make this uh, 1024 because I like my powers of 2. And then after that, if um, point distance 3D of target.x, target.y, target.z, um, x, y, z is greater than... Let's make it two times target distance. Let's say if, uh, how about if not instance exists target or point distance, then reset the target to no one. And we're going to want to wrap to this and, and if target not equal to no one, that should be a not minus, but that should be a not equal. Okay, let's try this code. This should um, this should cause it to expire if you go far enough away. Although I might have to go like really far away for that to happen. And this should also cause it to go away when I kill the thing, the guy, the whatever. There's something else I wanted to do. What else did I want to do? I wanted to... Oh, I wanted to draw the target in red instead of in black. Draw a circle color. All right, color one is going to be C red. Color two is also going to be C red and true. And let's make the target, let's make the radius a little bigger. Let's make that 32 instead of 16. And okay, we'll see how this works. If this works, it's going to be the last thing that I do in this video. And after that, I think I'm going to make, um, in the next video, I think I'm going to make the targeting system actually do something useful, like when combat. Um, but for now, we'll see. Got to make sure that this works first. All right, here we are. I'm standing over here. Hit the button, and there's indeed a red circle on your face. Let me run away. Far away. It should go away eventually. I don't know how much farther away I can get. Alright, so apparently I can't get that much farther away. Can I go here? It's still... Damn. Two times the uh, the target distance is pretty far. What if I go to the other side of the map? If I fly one over here? You can't see him because he's behind the... Okay, so now it went away. I don't know exactly how far away that is, but it can't be much farther than um than where I was. Uh, also, when I want to go and um, well, when I want to go and kill you, let's go and pick up the baseball again. All right, I have targeted the NPC. I'm gonna start hitting the button. Ah, that's the melee button. Want range? All right, that's oh, come on. Chase has the baseball. Chase, stop being weird. Even though that's quite hard because you're a dog. Um, wait a minute. Alright, so it crashed. Because, I assume because this is processed before it's being drawn. Alright. Well, I can include a check. If target not equal to no and if instance exists, I can, um, let's see, if 
Instance exists, target equals no one. Formatting this properly. Else, draw the circle. All right, I know this should work, but, oh, I can get rid of the point distance too, because that's handled elsewhere. But um, if, if the instance, I just dropped my phone off my desk. If the instance ceases to exist, That'll be handled in the draw event. This is very sloppy code. This is incredibly sloppy code. This is like the sloppiest code that, that you've ever seen. But it's going to work. Right? Game, you had better work. Otherwise, I'm just going to look like an idiot. Alright, I've equipped the baseball. I am going to target you. Oh, come on. World.target. This isn't working because, as it happens, player.target. Alright. Um... Oops, I didn't want that there. I wanted this in the draw event. Player.target. Player.target. All right. Oh, player.target there as well. Let's try this again. Been recording for almost two hours, and I still feel like I haven't gotten anything done. You there! One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, great. The target disappeared. Small victories. Anyway, that is targeting. Um, again, like I said earlier, I'm going to expand the system and probably actually make it mean something in the next video. But for now, I need to stop doing this because I've been working on it for almost two hours and I've gotten nowhere. And my brain is toast. Um, off screen, I might probably add some more small improvements like the butterflies and the dragonflies. Um, speaking of which, I feel like just dragging some into the world right now because no reason. Don't mind me. For now, if you want to download this, the, the project files and stuff will be in the description of this video. Where did the other ones go? I don't care. My name is Dragonite, and I will see you all later.